Carter Community. Hey everyone, I'm Mike Stevens and welcome to Afternoon Astonishments from Condor Community, the world's best magic club. In this show, we're going to dive deep into the mind-blowing magic performed by Eugene Berger. I'm here with Alex, Adam, and Aaron. Let's get hi, started. Hi. This is very exciting. I, I miss Eugene all the time. He was such a lovely guy. He was such a powerful magician. And whenever we find these clips... I feel like I got to visit with a friend that I haven't seen in too long. <laughs> and you're getting to visit with him when he was really young, too, because we I always see old clips of older Eugene, and you never get to watch uh, the young stuff, which is really it's exciting. It's like a combination of Burl Ives and Santa Claus. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's right. right. You know, now you get to see him sort of like George Carlin before, before the LSD, you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's kind of the case. I mean, really, when we when we see Eugene and a lot of the books that are published about him, it's about that later era Eugene where he sort of went into the mentalism and bizarre magic stuff. And this is sort of before that when he's still doing regular mainstream commercial magic, right? And you'll see that right away with the first trick that he performs here, that it's a totally commercial trick. But there's another trick that you'll see that's sort of moving into that other era of Eugene that we've uh, we've been speaking about. But this is Eugene from a TV appearance in England. Uh, it appears to be the late 80s, and uh, it's a really great appearance. Check it out. Thank you, Simon. It is a great pleasure to be here. Thank you. One of the questions that I'm often asked is whether I hide things in my beard. <laughs> I do. <laughs> what do you think it is? It's like a little red ball. Oh, you've played this before. <laughs> Have you ever heard of sawing a lady in half? Yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> I've always dreaded this moment, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Climb up on the table. <laughs> Just teasing. Okay. But I asked you that for a reason. Yeah. Because this is called sawing a red ball in half because you get two of them. <laughs> now they look alike. <laughs> well, uh, this one squeaks and this one doesn't. <laughs> or is that the one that squeaks and that's the one that doesn't? <laughs> I squeak. <laughs> now, Simon gets the first question. Of course, you will get the hard ones. Thank Hold you. your hand palm upward this one over here a little time on the rack and you'll fit perfectly now if i took one red ball and put it in my hand one in your hand hold it tightly if i took mine and threw it to you now think how many in my hand <clears throat> could be anything uh one <laughs> not very good with numbers are you well how many in your hand uh one i can feel it mm -hmm. <laughs> open your hand Oh. <laughs> the questions get harder. Really? Addition. One plus one equals... Two? The thing to remember. Magicians cheat. <laughs> One plus one plus one. Here's where I trick you. Minus one goes back into my pocket. How many are left in the hand? Two. No, I cheat. <laughs> I just told you that. Here, hold your hand palm up here. The hand with the nice watch. <laughs> if I took all three of them, here, hold them very tightly. Please let go of my finger, thank you. Now, if I didn't do anything at all, how many balls in your hand? Well, I think there are three, but... How many do you think you really have? It feels a bit more, but... but three? <laughs> Slowly open your hand. <laughs> Twenty-five, but who's counting? Now, uh, My age. this is very special. Take the cards. Mix them up. 
<laughs> That's enough. Now, don't make it too difficult for me. Uh, here, spread the cards in front of your face so the faces are toward you. But hold them up because sometimes I'm not trustworthy. Uh, take out a number card, not a picture card, a number card. Twelve less to deal with. Thank you. I'll take the deck. You keep the card. And on this side of your card, write your first name right on the card. But hold it up. I'll take the pen. Show the card to Simon, to camera two. And you have to remember the card, or this is fairly meaningless, if not futile. Say stop. Stop. Put the card back right the there. I can do this two ways. You too. <laughs> About 30% of the time, I actually do it psychically. Wow. <laughs> and the rest of the time, I cheat. We found that out. Yeah, is that a good? <laughs> Take the deck, cut it into three sections that are fairly equal, and then put them back together again in a different order. This is the motor skill part for you, my dear. Perfect. Now, what I'm going to do is give the deck a single cut from the two of diamonds to the ace of spades. And if I could do that every time, I'd be in Las Vegas right now. The glass is empty. The deck goes on top of the glass where I can't mess with it. And my hand is empty. Name the card. Five of hearts. You're not going to believe this. I know, no. Now. <gasps> Wait a minute. There is the five of hearts, and look, your name is still on it. <laughs> was that one of those Matt Shulian discoveries? I don't know if that was a Matt Shulian discovery. I think that that one might have been in Spirit Theater, and I think that that's when he was moving into it, but only had a certain amount of, you know, repertoire items that were that that sort of spooky feel to them, as it were, you know? But I think that was him moving into the beginning of that era, was this effect here. So I'm so glad he moved out of that era into the era that he ended up in, you know? Because, what? like, it wasn't as much fun. I mean, it was fun to watch that, but certainly, like, isn't isn't as isn't as great to watch the Eugene Berger doing the old stuff. I liked him more in his later years. That's all. I just really loved the, the stuff he did when he was Eugene Berger, you know? I think in the earlier days, it was a big Don Allen influence and a big Al Baker influence, and there was a lot of, you know, tricky trick stuff. But I think is, yeah, the, older yeah. got, the more it became, like, him doing the magic that looked like it at least had the possibility of being real or maybe real. And that I mean, when you learn great. lines there, that's when it feels more magical to me. I'm sure that that's what, what you're hitting on there, Adam. Yeah, it is. The tricks were great. Like the tricks were great. So there was a few jokes and like he had three or four jokes that just did like that kind of bomb. Like they didn't even, people just, you know, didn't even uh, notice them or anything. So I think like as he got away from that stuff later in his career, he, he became so much more amazing and, influential you know huh. mike had you ever seen him do that spongebob routine before i have i have and it makes me laugh every time because he there's something first of all i love sponge balls i think it's a great trick and there's so much fun uh, but he's he's um he's kind of goofy when he's doing that and it's and it's i don't know there's something cute about it it makes me laugh watching the great eugene Berger uh making his nose and sponge balls squeak on the table um I, I just think it's it's, it's charming. Let me ask you guys a question. I'm I'm feeling a little devil's advocate right now. You know, like I I used to see Eugene do a lot of parlor, a lot of stand up, and you know, and he would be doing the card warp. He would be doing the paper tear. He would be doing very atmospheric stuff. Um, and then one day I happened upon him. Uh, I was going up an elevator at a magic convention. And as I looked down, Eugene was sitting at a table doing card magic for some people. And I just watched him doing 
stuff that I should never have had this angle on him because I was way above him watching him make stuff disappear and appear and cards were flying and, you know, people couldn't see what was happening. And I always felt like there is this amazing evolution in Eugene, you know, reminds me of the Beatles in Hamburg or, or, <laughs> or again, George Carlin before the sixties or Richard Pryor before the seventies. Um, there's this, all of this wonderful character stuff, all this wonderful atmospheric stuff, but underneath it, there is this grounded foundation of just powerful Don Allen uh, or or stronger close up magic. And Al Baker, right? I think I think a lot of yeah. the Al Baker methods they lead into mental magic and mind reading and that sort of thing. So it's like Al Baker had a whole catalog of things available there. And you know, at one point Eugene was sort of lauded as the he was the advocate of Al Baker when Al Baker's time had long passed and he sort of was forgotten about. Eugene was sort of the guy that resurrected him and brought him back to everyone and made everyone realize how wonderful Al Baker is and all of his magic. It's like, just hey, amazing. Todd, get into Al Baker. I, for me, it was Todd Carr and, and Miracle Factory that really... Re That's what I'm saying. I think yeah. Alex is saying that that might have been where... But, but I, I think what I'm trying to say to you, Adam, is that I had the exact opposite feeling in a way watching that. I watched Eugene in a tuxedo in front of what seemed like a very large room with two people, two tiny balls and a squeaker uh, doing this masterful sponge ball routine. And I wasn't feeling like it wasn't connecting. I was feeling like this dude is, I, I, I miss the days when I was doing close up magic enough to have the a routine as wired as this thing is. Uh, you mentioned something earlier. You said about Don, about Don Allen being like being big influence of Don Allen. Like, was is that really the deal? Was was Don Allen a huge influence on on Berger? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, but, and you got to remember that when kid. Don Allen was on television, that's like right in the sweet spot for Eugene when he's a little kid. So he got to get like a straight shot right between Magic the eyes. Ranch. He saw me yeah. Magic Ranch. Yeah, exactly. They Watching the stuff. Yeah, yeah. No, I had an interesting experience with the uh, with that era of Eugene as well because when I got into magic, Eugene was clearly already in this other era, and uh, and all these books were out on all of his stuff. But as a magician, that's not really where I was. I loved it; I was a fan of it, but I couldn't perform any of that stuff. I didn't have the gravitas to sort of you know even try to present any of those things. And I was more interested in the other stuff that Eugene was doing, but I didn't know it until I bumped into an old videotape. And saw him talking about these methods and why they worked. And really, that was kind of my speed when I got into magic. And I needed that. I needed to like look at those methods and Eugene from that era to understand how it worked. And uh, it was very helpful to me. And then, of course, moving on into some of that other material, then, you know, that other Eugene's waiting for you in print, you know. So for me, it would, you know, I, I got a little bit of the, the whole journey, as it were. And, uh, and I appreciate both eras of Eugene for sure. We have a lot of club members who have learned the sponge balls perhaps the patrick page routine uh perhaps uh, the way a lot of them have learned the red ball routine that i teach um which is designed to teach you the fundamentals of it but i just i kind of wanted this clip as required viewing for all of our club members who've studied the trick uh watching this there's another thing that keeps coming into my mind is that eugene and max maven were besties as we've talked about in the Chan Canasta video the night that they invited me over for one hour to crash their slumber party. Uh, and they were in pajamas having a party. I, I sort of felt in a way watching that clip, I could feel the similarities between Max and Eugene. Like a lot of those lines, I could picture and remember Max saying things like that with a different edge. Max sort of could have a hard edge, a challenging edge to him. And Eugene would say those same things and he would somehow make them sweet. Mm. And uh, maybe it's like Servan and Jennings in a different kind of mode. But I just... I his low voice, bro. That, that voice, low voice? I think it is. I think it's that, that voice is so just soothing like read and read a book to me so, so i can go to sleep Papa. i wonder if max 
thought he sounded like Eugene when he said some yeah. of those lines. Yes. Because I could hear Max's intention when Eugene was saying those things, uh, mm -hmm. but not Eugene's tone. I just want our members to be able to see the timing, the control, the pacing of that routine, because it just, as a sponge bar routine, just doesn't get any better than that, if you ask me. It's, it's got everything you want in it. It's pretty wonderful. <laughs> you know, I would bet that Max and Eugene were sounding boards for each other and probably mirrors for each other so that they could understand how these things really hit, you know, because that's the only other guy that could do it for each other, as it were, right? <laughs> it's kind Chicago, of Chicago, meet Boston, and New Amsterdam. <laughs> I'm so glad you shared that with us. That was just incredible. Eugene, uh, I, wow, you just showed me. Maybe we can wrap up by sharing. You've got a tasty... Hard to get new book from Eugene, don't you? Oh, I pulled the dust jacket off it, but there's this new one just came. The, uh, the, yeah, the workshop transcripts. <laughs> this is a, it, it's it's continuing on with all of these, you know, the books that Eugene had scheduled to be released after he passed. What mm -hmm. a what a beautiful gift. I mean, he basically he's given us all of the stuff, and uh, in particular. Just like we recently talked about David Burgless, he had a very particular thing that he was famous for in card magic. Eugene had a very particular thing that he's famous for in card magic, and he's divulging all the work on it and giving us all the details. And this is the final book and uh, what now has become a trilogy uh, of this work. And uh, again, what a gift. What a beautiful thing. <laughs> All right. Well, that was fun. Let's wrap it up, guys. Thanks for joining us today on Afternoon Astonishments. Uh, if, you, if you'll if you do us a favor, hit the like button, hit the follow button, hit the subscribe button. You'll be notified when we go live with our next video, which should only be in a couple of days. All right. We'll see you soon, guys. Thanks for watching. Afternoon Astonishments! <laughs>